Greetings guys and gals, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel. In this episode of the Skyrim Special Edition Modding Guide, I want to discuss a mod that, when it was released, really got my attention. That mod is SSE Engine Fixes by AERS. As many of you know, I was a big advocate for SSE Fixes by MEH321. I now believe that this new mod replaces it and does much, much more. Not only does it correct the FPS engine bug in Skyrim Special Edition that MEH321's mod fixed, but it also covers tree reflections on water, water flow speed, some camera issues, and the infamous double perk bug. I'll do my best to explain and give examples of what SSE Engine Fixes does. We'll also cover the installation and finally configuration of the mods.ini file. Let's get right into it. First off, this is the Nexus page for this, and of course you can see it's SSE Engine Fixes. It is mod number 17230 on the Skyrim Special Edition Nexus site. And you can see the most recent version is version 2.0.1.5.39, and it was done today. That is the most recent update. It is May 16th. This is a working project mod. Future changes may happen, but as of today, May 16th, this is the best information I have for you. The mod author is AERS, and he uses a lot of fixes that MEH321 implemented into SSE fixes into SSE engine fixes. So just keep that in mind. It will do much of the same things. But I want to go over just kind of a few basics about what it does. Primarily, SSE engine fixes is going to fix the engine bug that causes SSE to slow down when you have more ESPs. In other words, more plugins from mods and other sources. As you get around 100 ESPs in your load order, you start to really see a significant drop in your FPS in certain places. Not everywhere, but just most noticeably in certain places. SSE Fixes did it very well, but now SSE Engine Fixes has the same sort of fix. Let me show you the results. I chose Riften as the test bed for this because I found that it mostly happened the FPS slowdown happened there the worst. As you can see in the first shot, my FPS in that area right as you enter the gate in Riften is about 42 to 43. Now I've turned off VSync and I don't have any ability to go over 61 frames per second, but you can see that the initial test on this was about 42 frames per second. With the mod installed, I'm now getting a solid 61, which is the best that my FPS counter can manage with the frames per second of my screen. Just so you know, I have a moderately powerful machine with a GTX 980 Ti, a very good processor, and lots of RAM. So, you know, with this fix, it is actually going to help quite a bit. There are two other memory improvements that SSE Engine Fixes implements, and one is called Use OS Allocators and BS Read Write Lock that are included in the any files that are hard to test because I wasn't having any slowdowns to begin with, and I didn't have any slowdowns afterwards, so it's hard for me to test. But I'll show you those in the any files. The other fixes that SSE Engine Fixes implements are basically this. Number one, let's talk about the double perk apply bug. Skyrim Special Edition, just like Skyrim, had a major issue. That every time you load a cell, the NPCs in that cell would get perks that were applied to that NPC. Let me give you an example. Naked Nord guy here runs up and encounters two bandits there and there. The perks that have been applied to those NPCs are in place. It could be more hitting, more speed. It could be more hit points. It could be anything, including mods that you have installed in your game, such as Ordinator. Naked Nord guy says, I've got to fight. I'm going to save the game. So he's now saved it. He's now going to go off and fight those guys and probably die because he's a Naked Nord guy. He reloads the game and attempts it again. Suddenly, those NPCs are twice as hard. Why? Well, because when you reload the game, it applied the perks again. So those two NPCs now have twice the perks. They are now harder than they were before. That's why sometimes when you save before a boss battle in the same cell, the boss will be harder the second go around. This mod corrects that problem. You won't have it anymore. Moving on, the slow time camera movement and the stationary vertical look sensitivity are kind of hard to test, but let me go over them in turn. 
The slow time camera movement fixes slow camera movement when stationary during slow time effects. You can see that's kind of hard to test. The stationary vertical look sensitivity fixes the vertical camera movement sensitivity being tied to your frames per second while stationary. Okay, you can see why those are hard to give examples for. We'll just move on to the next stuff. The water flow timer fix is basically one I didn't know about before reading about this mod. I was completely unaware. And the water flow speed is timed to the game's time scale. The fix decouples it and allows you to customize your water flow speed in the mods any file. And I'll show you where those are. But you can see in this first example with the water flow speed set at 20 for the time scale, the water looks relatively good. Without the fix in place, when you set it to, say, 120, it's much, much faster. With the mod installed, and you can see where I changed the time scale to 120 again, but the water flow speed remained the same. And like I said, you can change this in the any file, and I'll show you where that's at. The final fix I want to talk about is tree reflections. The tree LOD reflections in the water are broken in the game. We have kind of know that. They look really muddy and kind of off. It just doesn't look right, as you can see in the example shown on the screen. The fix is also included in EMBs, but it is included here for the people who don't edit the EMBs. And with the fix installed, it's much, much better. It is by default turned off in the any settings, but I'll show you where to turn that back on if you do not use an ENB. Let's go back to the mod page and I'll show you what we need to do for installation. This is a two part installation and AERS does cover it in the installation portions here. I'm going to show you how to do this. Go ahead and go to your file section and you will see two parts. Part one, the engine fixes 2.0 for SSE 1.5.39. It is an SKSE64 plugin and that's why the version of Skyrim is very important and the prerequisite of having SKSE64, the version of that is very important as well. So it's part one. This is the portion that can be installed via a mod manager. Already have it updated into mod organizer ready to go, but you just download that with your manager. Part two is a manual installation. This is an SKSE64 preloader and TBB library. Download this and extract it to your main Skyrim folder. Okay, cannot be installed with a mod manager. That's why it's going to be a manual download. You can see that the basically includes a DLL that is a port of SKSE plugin preloader. So it will run all the files before loading the game. And then a tbb.dll, it is a support library, but you're gonna need both those files. Download that manually to your desktop. And you can see that I have it on my desktop right here. This is what you're gonna need to do. Open up your main Skyrim directory and we're going to do part two first. This is the installation of the two DLL programs that we downloaded manually, the preloader and the TBB DLL files. Go ahead and open your Skyrim Special Edition main directory and you know you're in the main directory location where you see the Skyrim SE.exec. If you don't have extensions enabled, it'll just say Skyrim SE and the Skyrim SE launcher, but they're both .exec files. This is your main Skyrim directory, and this is where you need to install these. Open up your archive, and inside that archive, you'll find the two DLLs that I mentioned, the D3DX9 underscore 42 dot DLL and the TBB dot DLL. So you have an operational and a support file. Highlight both of these, just control click them, drag them over into your main directory. You don't need to unpack the archive. This will automatically unpack those files and drop it into your main archive. Now, of course, in there, you're going to see the d3dx9 underscore 42 dot dll, and you'll also see the tbb dot dll. That's all you need to do, but just make sure you've put it into your main Skyrim directory. For me, it's on my G drive, Steam, Steam apps, common, Skyrim special edition. Do not put it into the data folder. Part two is done. And that's just kind of a prerequisite. I went through and did part two first, but now we're going to do part one. And part one is the actual part that you put into your mod manager. There are a number of different mod managers out there. I use Mod Organizer 2, but basics, same apply. The only difference is that you do not have as much flexibility 
to put it where you want. Go ahead and double click on the mod and you can see it's SSE engine fixes, the SKSE64 plugin, and you're going to click manual. You'll see data. Go ahead and set data directory. And inside of that, you see SKSE. Inside of that file, you'll have plugins and the engine fix is 64.dll in any file and the preload.txt. That's perfectly fine. This format looks good. Press OK. It's going to be at the bottom or wherever you put it. And this is where I've discovered that in order to make it work, you need to have it in a certain place. And this came with a lot of testing in the last few hours to figure out where I wanted to put this thing. I've decided to place it under SKSE 64 scripts. And in other video, I showed you how to install SKSE 64, but you do need to have it installed. I also placed it under the SKSE64.any. The only reason for that is that the memory allocs in here are not active at this time, but for form's sake, if you had it, you want to place it there. SSE engine fixes, the SKSE64 plugin, needs to be below these two things. Even if you don't have the SKSE64.any, don't worry about it. You don't need it in all reality but it does need to be after the SKSE64 scripts for whatever version you may be seeing. And that's in order for the OS allocators to work properly. If you place it above SKSE64 scripts, the game will crash if you have OS allocators as true in the .any file. And I'll show you where those are. But I need to have that below it. And that's the proper priorities. And if you're setting Vortex or something else, you're just going to need to make sure that it's below the scripts for SKSE64. All right, let's open up this mod and we'll take a look. Inside of this, you have an any file. That any file is able to be configured through Mod Organizer 2. And let's go through all the different things. This is the main patch right here, the form caching. You can see that it is set to true. Leave that in true if you want the FPS fix to work properly. If you're using SSE fixes and you have not disinstalled it, SSE engine fixes will automatically recognize that and it will not turn itself on. So you can see it will auto disable itself if SSE fixes is detected. I recommend you fully go through SSE fixes and deinstall it because it is no longer supported. That's why we want to use this because it is being actively supported by AERS. So in my case, I want form caching enabled to true. And this should be the case for everybody else if you want the FPS fix. The next one is BS read write. And you can see it is set to false. So it is not enabled by default. This replaces the game mutex with a potentially faster one. It is disabled by default since it may or may not help performance. I set mine to true, but I could not see any change. That's probably because my game runs fairly well, and it's hard for me to detect the minor changes that I may get improvement from it. But I set it for true for testing, and I had no issues. You can try it out. You can either set it to false. You can try it at true. If you cause any problems, you can turn it back to false. But this is the way I have it in my setup. The next one refers to basically memory management for the games. It, with calls to Gemalock. This is the OS allocators patch. So in this case, the memory manager by default is set to false. You may or may not have an improvement from this. You may have increased problems because the fix could cause infinite load screen or stutter. So you just need to test it out. In my testing, I set it to true and had no major problems. If I were to set, now this is a side note, if you were to set it the SSE engine fixes above SKSE 64 over here, the OS allocators cause the game to crash. And that's because the SKSE 64 has memory fixes inside of it. So if you set it to OS allocators as true and set it before SKSE 64 over here, the game will crash because you have a memory allocation conflict. But by placing it below, you enable the memory manager to be set to true you didn't have any problems, but this is a very personal situation with many systems. If you find that you have an infant load screen or stutters, set it back to false and see how that works for you. Like I said, this is going to be 
the two cases, both the BS read write lock and the OS allocators memory manager that you need to test out and bounce back and forth and see which works best for you. Let's move to the next thing. The double perk apply bug, this is the one for the NPCs getting double perks on reload of a cell, is set to true. I recommend that you set it to true and leave it there. Don't change it. The slow time camera and the vertical sensitivity are both sensed to true. Those are the two fixes that I said were hard to demonstrate. Just leave them at true. They shouldn't cause any problems if you leave it there. You can try set it to false and see what happens, but I suggest leaving these to true. Here's the first one that we need to talk about that actually has two factors we need to think about. Under water flow, you see enabled equals true. This is the one with the water flow speed being tied to FPS. This will fix it by having it set to true. If you turn it off, it will go back to the water speed being tied to FPS. So I say leave it to true. The other factor inside of water flow is the time scale. By default, it is set to 20. That is the default time scale for Skyrim in general. You can slow it down, you can speed it up, but the water flow speed will always be set to 20 if it is set to true in the water flow. You can change that time scale by simply changing the number. And I always suggest round numbers in this. For example, my personal time scale is 12.0. That's where I play. So the days are longer. This will slow down the time scale on the speed of the water flow. So if it looks too slow to you at 12, you could increase it up to something else, to like 16.0. Or if that looks too slow, you can go back to the 20.0 that is the default speed for the game. It's entirely up to you and what looks normal. I think 20 looks fine in most general places. You could slow it down, you can speed it up. It's entirely up to you. I find that in general, 16, is about right. So it slows it down a little bit, but not a lot. This is the other fix that is set to default. This is the tree reflection, and you can see it's enabled to false. For ENB users, this is the proper setting because the fix is inside of Boris's ENB files. If you do not use an ENB, you want to change that to true. And you can see it makes a big difference in the water reflections, as you can see on the right. Just remember, you do not want to use both. So it's entirely up to you if you're using an ENB. Just remember that if you do add an ENB to your game later on, that you'll need to come back and change it back to false. When you're all done with this, you go ahead and save the file and you close the any editor and you're all set. So basically you're getting a ton of fixes from SSE engine fixes. As long as you do both parts, and with testing, I went through and checked all the settings and checked all the performance issues, and I saw great improvement across the board. That is SSE engine fixes. I want to thank you guys for watching, and if you have any problems or questions, go ahead and let me know. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.